Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. of periodontal pockets at the distal surface of maxillary terminal molars is frequently complicated by the presence of bulbous fibrous tissue over the tuberosity. A distal wedge operation combined with reverse bevel flap surgery will be performed to eliminate periodontal pockets involving the maxillary second molar. The patient is a 68-year-old woman in good systemic health. The interproximal pockets are four to five millimeters deep. The buccal pockets, three to four millimeters, and the distal pocket of the second molar is six millimeters. The interproximal palatal pockets between the molars measure five millimeters. distopalatal pocket of the second molar is six millimeters. The Röntgenogram shows considerable horizontal bone loss around the second molar and slightly less bone loss around the first molar. The inadequate restorations were corrected prior to the surgery. Following local infiltration, a buccal incision is made parallel to the long axis of the teeth. The incision is kept close to the free gingival margin and directed toward the alveolar crest. A Bard Parker number 12 B blade is used. Care is observed to conserve as much of the interproximal papilla as possible and yet remove the epithelial pocket lining. An incision is then started from the distal buccal aspect of the last molar, carried down to the alveolar process, and extended distally towards the hamulus. A second distal incision is made about three millimeters away from the first. is also carried down to the alveolar process and angled to contact the alveolar process close to the first incision. This will permit the removal of a wedge of fibrous tissues. Orban knife is used to make the reverse bevel incision on the palatal side. Slightly exaggerated scalloping will provide good flap adaptation at the completion of the surgery. Notice the preservation of the interdental papilla. Intracravicular incision is made along the palatal surface of the teeth to separate a collar of gingival tissues from the teeth. The distal wedge is removed with a rongier, which is also used to remove the palatal collar of tissues around the molars. A 
buccal and interproximal intracurricular incision is extended to the alveolar crest. The Bard Parker number 12B blade is used. tissue is also removed with the rongier. The palatal aspect of the distal wedge is undermined so that a thin flap will be available to cover the bone at the completion of surgery. Undermined fibrous palatal tissue is then freed from its attachment to the tooth and bone. The fibrous tissue is removed with a rongier. A similar undermining incision is made on the buccal side in order to make the distal buccal flap as thin as the distal palatal flap. The undermined distal buccal tissue is also removed. periosteal full thickness flap is raised. An undermining palatal incision is made with the Bard Parker number 12B blade prior to raising the palatal mucoperiosteal flap. This will create a thin palatal flap, allowing the pockets to be eliminated and providing good flap adaptation after the surgery. The flap is raised with a mucoperiosteal elevator. The palatal tissue that was separated from the flap by the previous incision adheres to the underlying bone when the flap is deflected. Adhering tissues are freed with an Orban knife. The incision is made around the neck of the teeth and on top of the bony surface. The connective tissue that was separated from the flap and the bone is removed with a curette. planed with curettes, starting at the distal aspect of the second molar. It is important that this planing include all the surfaces of the teeth that were previously exposed in the periodontal pockets. The buccal flap is deflected and the interproximal soft tissues are removed. The roots are also thoroughly planed. There is no trifurcation involvement on any of the teeth. The buccal flap is raised and the wound is irrigated with sterile saline solution. The roots and crest of supporting alveolar bone can be carefully inspected. Note the planed root surfaces. This mirror view shows extensive root exposure of the second molar. Note the well-planed root surface. The pockets did not extend into the distal lingual trifurcation. 
The flaps are sutured in place with individual direct interproximal sutures. The needle is passed through the buccal papilla and the interproximal space to the lingual sign. It is then inserted through the palatal papilla and carried back through the interproximal space to the buccal. The two ends are then gently drawn taut and tied. The distal wedge area is also sutured with direct sutures. The needle is inserted through the buccal flap and then through the palatal flap. The palatal tissues in the tuberosity region are very firm and dense and are somewhat difficult to penetrate. The buccal and palatal aspects of the wedge area are pulled closely together by the suture. A second suture is placed to further secure the buccal and palatal flaps. Notice that the tuberosity is reduced in size, but the soft tissue is closely adapted to the tooth. The free gingival margin has been positioned apically on the second molar as a result of the reverse bevel flap and the removal of underlying connective tissue. acromycin ointment is placed over the wound to minimize the hazard of infection associated with silk sutures. The ointment also prevents the dressing from adhering to the sutures. The ointment is also applied around the sutures and flap on the palatal aspect. A surgical dressing has been adapted to the teeth and the surrounding tissues. The dressing should not interfere with occlusal function. The dressing is removed one week post-operatively. And only minimal inflammation is present in the areas of surgery. The sutures are removed. Care is taken not to pull on the tissue flaps. The healing has progressed well and no further sutures are needed. The teeth should be polished and the patient instructed in the necessity for maintaining proper oral hygiene. The distal wedge operation combined with a reverse bevel flap has eliminated the periodontal pockets and restored tissue health.
You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.